Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back. In this session, we're going to start to dive into the level two assessments. But before we begin a specific example, I'd like to provide you with sort of a roadmap of the different um, aspects of CREEP and the, and the corresponding standards, uh, because it's important uh, before one goes and commits to a specific uh, case. So level two assessment procedures we'll go through, and then we're gonna look at alternative creep procedures, some of the standards that are available out there. When performing a level two assessment, there will be a number of subcategories for the assessments that you should be aware of. The, there is a creep fatigue, there's crack growth, there's creep buckling, dissimilar metals, and creep rupture. And the, the procedures for each one are, are a bit different. And it's, um, and it's important to decide which, which criteria you're, one is going to follow. Creep rupture refers to components that are subject to steady state constant operation in the creep range, and they do not have any crack, crack type flaws. And it's one of the, the, the most simplest types of analysis that you would do. Creep fatigue interaction refers to uh, components that are subject to creep and fatigue at the same time. So this procedure is applicable to components that are subject to both cyclic operation that are in within the creep range and they do not have any crack like flaws. Both refers to components that are subject to either a steady state condition or cyclic operation in the creep range, which may contain crack-like flaws. Refers to the time at which a component in the creep range may be subject to structural instability, which means it could collapse due to compressive stress field. Creep fatigue assessment of dissimilar metals uh, is referred to in section 10.5.6, and it's applicable to two and a quarter one moly materials, two and a quarter one moly vanadium to austenitic stainless steels, and this other dissimilar weld metal joints that are made of stainless steel or nickel based filler metals. So this is for very high temperature uh, heat resistant materials. And the last one, the criteria, I did put that in the pinwheel here, but it's called microstructural approaches. And um, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's not completely accepted, but it's because of the limited ability and certainty of structural properties uh, these type of assessments are usually used to supplement the other techniques. So um, that's why I didn't include it because it's sort of something to verify what the creep assessments, the types of creep assessments may, may offer. So that's, a, uh, it's mentioned in 579 and uh, that's what that one is about. Now there are other methods besides API 579 to assess these procedures. And they've been 
developed quite extensively over the last 20 years, uh, especially work on very serious problems associated with creep and, and cracking. And the British have a, have a standard called R5. Uh, there is a, another s a standard called uh, BS7910. EPR has a study, uh, has studies to do with it. They're, they're, I've never seen that they're quite expensive uh, to get. The uh, WRC 440 uh, has some some really interesting data, lots of uh, experience uh, summarized there, and and of course ASME has the uh, the boiler pressure vessel code uh, part three section NH, which is the the nuclear code. The British en energy industry. Uh, uses uh, the R5 procedures as a method to assess the integrity of nuclear and conventional plants operating at high temperatures. Uh, they routinely use these standards, for example, for uh, assessment of metallic components. Uh, and, and, and for the example that I was given was for advanced gas cooled reactors that typically operate in the 470 to 650 degree centigrade range. And this is an international um, uh, procedure that has been developed over the years uh, with cooperations of, of several countries. British Standard 7910 which is entitled The Guide to Methods for Assessing Acceptability of Flaws in Metallic Structures has been in use for almost 30 years in the United Kingdom. And it has been used for assessment of flaws in metallic structures uh, in the form of fracture fatigue assessment procedures. And it is the basic framework or procedural framework that has been used for analyzing fabricated fabrication flaws that are in need of repair and uh, there's pr there's procedures there as well from what I understand and they rely on long established experiential uh, type uh, workmanship rules the it has been embraced by the uh, United Kingdom offshore industry in particular uh, for its approach to flaw assessment and it is widely recognized by safety authorities as the way of of uh, analyzing and resolving pressure problems for for pressure equipment epri which is the electric power research institute has published a number of studies under the name Remaining Life of Boiler Pressure Parts and Crack Growth Studies in Response to uh, Assessing the Reliability and the Risk of Continuing to Operate Components and, and the Risks of Failing uh, Due to Creep and Fatigue in Interactions in Power Plants, so High Temperature Units. And, and they, so they, they developed it as a, as a means to develop better approaches of practical methods of analysis and assessment and um, basically they go on to say that um, because stress and strain are normally used in a calculation of creep damage during the whole time the estimate of inelastic deformation accompanying stress relaxation during the whole time plays an important role in the prediction of life of crack initiation under Pre fatigue conditions. So it's a, it's a pretty deep study and there's a lot of uh, uh, tables in that. The Welding Research Council has developed standard WRC 440, a synthesis of fracture assessment methods proposed in the French RCC MR code for high temperatures. And the, basically the bulletin covers the subject of high temperature crack, crack growth with a discussion to the approach used by, in, by France in the framework of developing a construction code 
uh, based upon uh, you know defect assessment procedures. So this is to ad address another uh, report used to um, assess failure assessments. ASME Section 3 has published a document called Rules for Construction of Nuclear Facility Components, Division 1, NH, that's for nuclear, for components operating at high temperature service. And basically, the subsection contains requirements for materials, design, fabrication, and examination in the manufacturing installation of core support structures at critical components. And the core support structures are those structures uh, or parts of structures that are, which are designed to provide direct support or restraint of the core. So that's like the fuel blanket assemblies within the reactor pressure vessel. And so um, that's what that one's about. So careful application of this uh, section will help users to comply with the applicable regulations within jurisdictions while achieving the operational cost and safety benefits for gain from, from best practices. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.